In every child, there are trillions of cells that contain a collection of DNA that serves as the instructions for the creation and function of their body. You inherit two copies of each gene, one from mom and one from dad. Typically, in cases of disease inheritance, a mutation or a disease-causing change in the DNA can be from mom's copy, dad's copy, both copies, or neither. This means that the mutation can either be inherited or can arise on its own. This video is going to explain the inheritance of mitochondrial disorders arising from mutations in the unique DNA located in the mitochondria. Within the cell, there is a structure called the mitochondria that is known as the powerhouse of the cell. The mitochondria are special in that they have 37 of their own ring-shaped DNA that differs from DNA in the nucleus. This is called mtDNA. It is important in disease inheritance because mtDNA, as well as mtDNA mutations, can only be passed on to the child from the mother, meaning all of her children will be affected by her mutation. Sometimes within the mitochondria, the mtDNA rings are a mixture of healthy and mutated rings. This is called heteroplasmic. Other times, all of the mtDNA rings carry a mutation. This is called homoplasmic. The number of rings containing a pathogenic mutation can vary from mother to child. For instance, a mother can have 30% of her mtDNA affected by a mutation, while her child could have 80% of his mtDNA affected. This can account for cases where the severity of symptoms differ between family members. To summarize, mitochondrial disorders are passed through mtDNA from a mother to all of her children. However, the number of mutated mtDNA rings in the mitochondria affects the severity of symptoms in mitochondrial DNA disorders. On behalf of TGen and the Center for Rare Childhood Disorders, thank you for watching this video. We hope we were able to expand your understanding of mitochondrial inheritance. We invite you to re-watch this video as often as you'd like and to share it with other family members to inform them as well. And as always, the staff of the C4RCD is available to answer your questions when you've finished. For more information about other modes of inheritance and the process of whole exome sequencing, please see the links below.